Now the next question, question number six. I see a beautiful scenery with mountains, skies, green trees. I like the atmosphere and the scene. I wish to stay here a bit longer to enjoy the scene. At which point is it Sankara? Right? Now, there's, there's two parts of it. The first part is the upper part, describing an experience which is very pleasant, beautiful scenery, oh, nice, you know, scenery, nice view, and the, the weather is cool and you feel good, blue skies, so you feel very happy and peaceful. You want to hang around a bit longer to enjoy and savor the, the wonderful experience. Now, there is also Sankara going on. So at which point is Sankara? So there are two questions. One is dealing with this response to pleasurable experience. The other one is uh, where does this word Sankara, what is the meaning of Sankara and what is it, how it is affecting the whole experience? So we're going to be talking about Sankara and how it's affecting the whole experience from the perspective of Tilakana. Tilakana is commonly translated as the three marks of existence. Three marks of existence is not a very uh, a helpful way to explain what Tilakana is. Tilakana is really, and, and I'm using Bhante Punaji's words, threefold nature of all that is supposed to exist. Realize all that is supposed to exist. Here, Bhante is not saying everything is in existence. But that's the important thing here. Because when you say Tilakana is the three marks of existence, you are stating empirically or stating categorically that existence is there. Now, when you state that, then you are clinging on to existence, you will never be able to free from existence. You will never cultivate yourself to be free from existence. You will always be experiencing the dukkha of existence. But here Bhante says, you know, Existence is not something permanent. Existence is actually an experience. So threefold nature of all that is supposed to exist. So our experience is that we think we exist. We are living in a dream of existence. That's what Bhante has been telling us, that we are living in a dream of existence. We think everything is supposed to exist. So there are these threefold nature, anicca, Dukkha anatta. Anicca normally means impermanence. Things are always changing. Things are never are not predictable. And dukkha, whatever that keeps changing, leads to some kind of dissatisfactoriness. So that is some kind of suffering of some sort. And all that leads us to become self-centered. And the reality of life, the threefold nature of reality is that, you know, nothing is personal. Right. So it is impersonal. So first we deal with this question of Tilakana and then we're going to talk about Sankara. So I'm referring to Bhante's Arya Maga Bhavana book, level 3, page 117 and 118. So I'll give you the link to download if you don't have a hard copy. For those of you unable to get a hard copy, later on you will see the link. And you can get a hard copy by visiting uh, Buddhist Mahavihara. Now they have it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if their uh, Buddhist Mahavihara is open, but I believe they are open now. You can go there and pick up the books if you want to. Uh, so basically this is from Arya Maga uh, Bhavana Meditation Guide, Level 3 page 117 and 118, where Bhante points out uh, that there are three types of sankara, right? Uh, mental construction is citta sankara. Now, from time to time, you may come across documents that says mano sankara. It's actually referring to the same thing, more or less. Right? It's talking about the construction in the mind as a result of what we have perceived. So this is by uh, building up from Sanya and Vedana, which are part of the Panchakanda, the five constituents of the process of uh, perception, or some people call these as the, as the five, uh, five parts of Panchakanda, okay? So this is really constructing the perception in the mind. So this is really mental construction. The next is verbal construction, vachi sankara, 
Vachi refers to speech. Here it's not talking about what you say. It's talking about what the mind is saying. So this is really mental speech. What is being spoken in your mind? So this is really constructing uh, basically questions and answers in your mind. Whenever we see something, there is a process of question and answer. Because when you see something, the first thing the mind asks unconsciously, you're not aware of it normally. That is a question. What is this? And then the mind will try to look back into memory and then say, ah, this, is, look, this looks like this, this looks like that, this may be this, and then starts to identify what it is. So this process of mind is vitaka vichara. Vichara basically is asking the question, what is this? Vitaka is answering the question, ah, this is this. So it's a, it's a, man, it, it's an, it's a process you are not consciously aware of. It's constantly going on. Right? So that's Vachi Sankara. And finally, this uh, physical construction, Kaya Sankara. Basically, this is referring to the process of breathing. Because when the mind thinks, it is only able to think when the cells in the body are active, especially all the brain cells. When they are active, that's, that produces a process of thinking. And it needs energy. Cells need energy in order to carry out this process. So this Kaya Sankara is referring to that process of feeding energy to the body to, to process thoughts and, and feelings and emotions and so on. So this is really the energy that, that causes the activity to go on internally. Without that energy, then it cannot go on. So this is really those three types of uh, Sankara. Uh, you can read the rest yourself. I won't go, uh, read them. But basically, when we talk about construction, right? Uh, mental construction. There are three types of sankara in the mind. It's all happening in the mind because there's another type I'll talk about in a moment uh, that is not happening in the mind, right? But basically, these are all happening in the mind. Chitta sankara refers to the construction of a mental image arising of what was perceived through the sense organs. That means when light enters the eye, you are able to see something, and then chitta sankara is producing the mental image, the rupa, right? And this is by building together like bricks to to put bricks to make a wall and if you imagine the wall is the whole picture then the bricks basically are put up to create the wall or if i use another uh, analogy it's like putting pieces of jigsaw puzzle together until you get the whole picture of the jigsaw puzzle forming the full picture the big picture so sanya vedana are like the pieces and you put them together and produce it. This process of putting it together is really pancha upagdana kanda. And in there, there are five constituents. Sankara is one of them. Okay, So this is really the, the five constituents of the process of perception. And with every mental image perceived, there is an identification process going on. That process is actually called the pancha. There's an identification process of the perceived image in the mind. And you begin to identify by asking questions. What is this? Ah, I remember this. Oh, this looks like this and this looks like that. Okay. And finally, uh, Kaya Sankara is the construction of this physical energy to feed, uh, to keep these processes going on. So you can read the rest of it in Bhante's uh, notes. And then you can post questions after reading this. So that I, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. I suggest you download this book if you don't have it. If you have it, make sure you have the correct version. If you turn to that page, it should be these texts. If not, then you have to download the latest version. Right? You may have an outdated version. So then, therefore, this, the, you can then read through it and then ask me questions after that. Right? So let's talk about this experience, experience of seeing. Um, a lot of people think of seeing like as though, oh, I see the object. And therefore, the word rupa is used to, to uh, is translated to refer to that physical object out there. That's where the mistake lies. Rupa does not refer to that physical object out there. Rupa actually refers to the mental image arising in your mind. 
Let me show you where is Rupa. If you want to see something, let's see, the, there is this dog. When you want to see a dog, first you need a light. If it is pitch dark, there is no light. Can you see the dog? Of course not. Pitch dark, not one shine, not one ray of light. You can't see anything. It's completely black. So when light is reflected from that object, falls into your eye, right? So it stimulates the light sensitive cells at the back of your eye on the retina. So your, your eyeball is the sense organ. And here we're referring to a person where the eyes are working. So therefore, at the same time, that person is paying attention. And when the person pays attention to the dog, where there's light reflected from the dog, that person is able to see the dog, and that process of perception arises. That is the Panchakanda. And when this process arises, there is a mental image. Ah, then you have a mental image formed in your mind of the dog. That is Rupa. Rupa is not that object out there. Unfortunately, somehow it, the word Rupa is used to translate as the object out there. That is really not correct. The correct meaning of Rupa is a mental image, appearance. Actually, the, the real meaning of the word Rupa is appearance. Something appears. So when we speak of appearance, we're speaking of our own experience. So when you are aware something appears, where does it appear? It appears in your mind. That appearance happens in your mind. The same thing when a magician is performing magic tricks and making objects appear and disappear. We're not talking about those objects out there that is appearing or disappearing. The magician is producing something that tricks your senses. So now you actually have an illusion, right? A, a, an illusion that something appears and disappears. Uh, you know, that this person stands behind the curtain and then when the curtain drops, the person is not there. So whether the person appears or not appear, it's all happening in your mind. That is the rupa. So now you're able to see the dog, right? But this seeing is really not seeing the dog. This seeing is actually light reflected from the dog. That is what we're seeing. We are never seeing the dog. We're always seeing light reflected from the dog. Now talk about another thing, hearing. Where there is a sound, somebody claps his hand and you can hear somebody clapping. So are you hearing the person clapping? No. You, when that person claps, each clap, it causes a vibration of the air. So air vibration enters your ear and stimulates, strikes at your eardrum. So it produces uh, a chain reaction where the uh, receptors or these uh, optic nerves, or not optic nerves, nerves, nerve endings inside the ear, right, in the cochlea, in the part of the ear called the cochlea, they begin to shake and then you, you, they produce a, a frequency that resembles a sound. So your mind has a sound image arising. So in other words, when somebody claps his hand, you are not hearing the clapping. You are hearing air vibrations caused by the clapping. So when somebody claps his hand, you are able to hear it. You are hearing air vibrations produced by the clapping. But if somebody claps his hand, it is also possible you can't hear anything. Why? Because you're wearing earplugs. And if you're wearing earplugs, no matter how hard the person is clapping, you know, if those earplugs are very effective, it stops the air vibration entering the ear to strike the eardrum and therefore you're not hearing anything. You see, when you ear, wear earplugs, you're not able to hear. It's not because that person stopped clapping. It's because air vibration is not going on. The same thing with the dog. If somebody blindfolds you, even the dog is right in front of you barking away, you can't see the dog because you're blindfolded. Reflected light is not entering your eye. The dog is there. So if Rupa is translated as the dog out there, then you, you still have the Rupa. No, you can't. You don't have the Rupa. 
because you are blind blindfolded. So when you're blindfolded, you can't see the dog. So there's no mental image of the dog. So this is really what rupa means. Whether we're talking about uh, seeing, hearing, or so on, it is all mental image arising. And this is really the experience. As I mentioned to you before, this is experience. And this is dharma. Dharma is the experience. We're not talking about dharma as in Buddha dharma. We're talking about dharma as the experience, the experience of a perception. And this experience is uh, because of light reflected. And then your mind begins to project. Oh, there is a dog out there. Your mind begins to project, projecting uh, the concept of an object uh, identified as a dog out there, right? So this thing called out there, your mind has created the out there. Out there is a world out there. In here, that's me, right? So out there is the world. So your mind automatically breaks this experience into two parts. And this process of breaking into two parts is called dichotomy. Dichotomy of experience into what is objective out there. And then you are experiencing the mental image in here, subjective experience. Right? So your mind begins to project, oh, there is a dog out there. And then oh, I like that dog. There is this subjective experience. And you cling on to that. And that's why you have this concept that what's happening in here is because this is the self. This is me. Right? I like it. So this is causing this subjective experience, the I, me, or mine. And then you begin to react to it. Right? So basically, this reaction is your mind creating concepts. And that's Vajisagara. And you begin to think, oh, what a lovely dog. How I wish I can keep him as a pet. You know, it could be your neighbor's dog or it could be a, a stray dog or somebody else's dog. You happen to like that particular dog. So you think, oh, what a lovely dog. How I wish I, I can keep it as a pet. Or if you were like me, <laughs> when I was a little boy, I was uh, bitten by a dog. So I'm quite fearful of dogs sometimes, especially Alsatians. If you were like me, my Vachi Sankara would be the opposite. My Vachi Sankara would say, oh, no, there's a dog out there. Go away, dog, go away. That would be me. So instead of uh, liking it, I dislike it. Right? So that's, how, that's my experience. So therefore, every person has a different subjective experience. It may be the same dog. Two people standing next to each other, you and me, and you're a dog lover. You see that dog, your mind says, what a lovely dog. How I wish I can keep that dog as a pet. Me, seeing exactly the same dog from the same angle with the same amount of light, my mind would say, oh no, that's a dog. Get away from me, you know? We have different reaction. We have different subjective experience. Right? The objective experience may be similar, but the subjective experience is different. So again, all this is, experience, uh, is explained by Bhante in the book, Aryamaka Bhavana. Uh, so you can read through it, and this is uh, in Arya Maga Bhavana level one, page uh, forty-nine to fifty-one. So you can read through that, and there's more there where Bante talks about uh, the Panchakanda and the five constituents of the process of perception. Read through it, and then if you have questions, feel free to post.